How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Oh, hi, everyone. Hi. Do you all remember the, the story that we told last about how the journey of how the universe came to be? Yes. Well, at the end of that story, remember particles had all settled according to their laws. Some had become liquid, uh, solids and created the crust of the earth, and others had become liquids and filled the crevices of the earth with water as seas and oceans and lakes. And then some had remained gases and filled the air and created our atmosphere. Do you remember that? Yes. Well, it wasn't quite as peaceful as you made it seem. And obviously, it wasn't really the end of the story. A lot happened after that. Today, the story continues, and we're going to learn about the journey of how life came to Earth. And that includes all of us. But so many life forms existed before humans came to our Earth. Are you ready? Yeah. Close your eyes. Try to imagine the crusty earth with all kinds of salt water filling the crevices and the atmosphere filled with poisonous gases like carbon monoxide. The earth really was not a friendly place for life at all. I wonder what the rocks that made up the earth, the water the, that filled the crevices, and the air that made up the atmosphere, and the sun that shone down on the earth would have said, said way back then. What if they had voices? Let's pretend. Open your eyes. Sorry. Sorry. Water, I have noticed that you're full of salt and minerals. What's going on with you? Uh, we don't really know. We're just following our laws. If we're very hot, we evaporate. And if I cool down, I turn back into liquid. And if it's really cold, I become a solid. I wonder if air has something to do with this problem. Oh, so when air gets hot, it picks me up and carries me high up into the atmosphere where it's cold. And then I start to cool down and turn into a heavy liquid. So I drop down to the earth and Crumble with the rocks. And th that then fell into my ocean. So, why don't you speak to air about this? Okay. Air, what do you think the problem is? Well, we don't know either. I mean, we're just following our laws. Our job is to cover up the earth and be like a blanket around her. Yeah, it's a very big job, and we have to move a lot to do well. I think rocks might, be, uh, <coughs> rocks might be the part of the problem. Yeah. When they get hot, they make us hot. And we have to follow our laws and move. But when we move when we're hot, we carry water with us. And it, it gets heavy as it cools in the upper atmosphere. Uh, so we drop it. <sighs> Unfortunately, when we drop the water, sometimes it carries some of the carbon monoxide with us. And together they crumble the rock. The other problem is that when we get moving really fast, we upset the water in the oceans. So it crashes against the rocks and crumbles them even more. So you see, if rocks didn't get so hot, none of this would happen. So why don't why you speak, speak with the rocks? Okay. Rocks, what do you have to say about all of this? I'm just following my laws, just like everyone else. I said it all day and become hot because of the heat from your rain. I don't know about myself. Water rushes over me and crumbles me into the sea. So what will we do? Well, I can't see that we're all just following our laws. And just as this laws govern us, there must be a plan of some sort to resolve this problem. And so it was that there were laws of nature yet to unfold in our universe. Those laws apply to molecules that united and eventually formed the simplest single cell example of life. Over time, single-celled creatures became more and more complex, and more and more creatures of plants and trees and flowers came to exist. 
Some of these life forms live for a very long time and then died away when they have completed their purpose on Earth. Eventually, after more than 3.8 billion years, human beings came to exist. In the great timeline of life, humans have only been around for a very, very short time. Why don't you all come down, all of the kids, come on down. We're going to take a look at the timeline of life in greater detail. Come on down and gather around, maybe, maybe up to this line. So sit right here. Some can see it back. Some of you will find it in your classrooms, and those who don't have it in your classrooms can probably borrow it from one of your neighboring classrooms if you want to study it further. And that's really what it's here for. This timeline of life is very, very long, and it covers an enormous period of time, about four and a half billion years. So scientists, when they were studying the, the life forms on life, had to break it into categories to be able to discuss what they were learning. So for example, here on our time, we can see that the top strip has the, has the name Paleozoic. That refers to a very, 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 very long period of time in our world's history. Then we come to the Mesozoic era. And that was also very long, though not as long as the Paleozoic, and then the Cenozoic. But even within those categories, scientists broke it down to smaller and smaller categories. You can see here there's one, two, three, four categories that it was broken down to, into, even just on this timeline. Has anyone ever heard of the word invertebrate? Yeah, uh, yeah. So there was an age of invertebrates. Have you ever heard of fish? Yeah. yeah. So there was the age of fishes. Amphibians. Yeah. I bet somebody here knows what an amphibian yeah. is. And that was an age, the age of reptiles. Who lived during the time of reptiles? Dinosaurs. And then there were the age of mammals. And it turns out human beings are mammals. So, I wanted you to have a look at the whole timeline. During this time, there were ice ages. This represents ice. And that changed things. That changed the ability of life form to develop. And sometimes created good conditions for new life forms, but sometimes created the extinction of other life forms. Extinction means died out. So, there were ice ages during this time. There were also volcanoes. Yeah. Many of you got to see how volcanoes work with Mr. Brendan, didn't you? Yeah. The other day. And Miss Leanne showed you too. Okay. Uh, there were a lot of things that happened. There were mountains that were created. There were plant. Li there was plant life that came. There was animal life. Right now, we're going to turn the lights down low on our timeline and turn the lights up on our shadow puppet. And we're going to have a closer look at some of the animals that create, were created over time during the, the journey of the life forms that came to Earth 3.8 billion years ago. Okay, here, let me turn my flashlight on. 
All right, in this very first part, we can see a real, well, the first thing that happened was there were single-celled life creatures that came to life, and they had a really important job to do. They had to clean up the earth, because remember, it was, it was full of poisonous gas, and there were all kinds of salts and other, other uh, minerals in the water that made it impossible for life to exist. Well, because of that, these single-celled creatures had to start eating away at all these things that were, were keeping life from existing on Earth. And as they did that, some of those single-celled creatures managed to split and become two-celled creatures, and then multi-celled creatures. And over time, they were able to recreate themselves and reproduce. And that changed things a lot. Let's see if there's anything here that you recognize. I see these single-celled creatures right in the beginning. And then we, um, we also had trial bites. They were really, really important. They did a lot of cleaning up on Earth. And they lived for a long time. These red, these red lines indicate when a creature lived and then when it died off, when, it, when its purpose was fulfilled and it no longer needed to, to live. So over time, we had our trilobites, and we had shells. A lot of the creatures early on had hard shells because there were other animals in the ocean that would come along and try to eat them. And so their shells kept them safe from some of those creatures. But some of those creatures developed really strong claws and strong teeth, and they were able to bite right through that armor. So then, during that time, the fish figured it out, and they dropped their hard shells, and they started to be able to swim a lot faster. But also during that time, there were things like this that look a lot like plants, but they're called crinoids and they have their, their feet kind of on their head. And they, uh, they were actually animals. Then there was this giant cephalopod. Can you see him with his cone shape? And do you see this one? This is a starfish. That's something that still exists today, doesn't it? So, so a lot of these animals are, are still living today, even though they were created millions of years ago. So we continue on our timeline, and all the sea creatures are trying to find food, they're cleaning up the ocean, they're eating each other, they're reproducing, and there are more and more and more of them all the time. So food maybe was becoming a little scarce. So some of these creatures noticed that there were insects on the land. They thought those insects pretty tasty. So they developed feet and they were able to go out onto land for short periods of time. Oops. And um, while they were out there, they could eat the bugs or eat the plants and then they could also lay their eggs. And in doing that, their eggs were a little bit safer. They weren't just floating in the water for any predator to come along and gobble up. So that was a very positive thing. These, these um, amphibians, is what they're called, were animals that could live in the water and live on land. And so they developed these feet, and then, and then the insects, what do you, that's a huge dragonfly. That's like a monster dragonfly. Where do we have that? Oh, did I, here he is giant dragonfly. That was during the time of the amphibians. So what happened is the insects didn't want to be eaten up. They didn't want to become extinct. So they developed wings so they could fly away from their predators. So time went on and plants were coming, uh, coming along and then the plants would die off and they would create the minerals and the um, fuel that exists in our earth that we have the mine. And so continue to, the time continued, there was another ice age. And you can see down here there are examples of how the earth was changing. Sometimes continents came together and formed 
a larger land mass. Sometimes they broke apart. Sometimes there were earthquakes. The, the earth was still very, very um, active, and there were lots of things happening all the time while life forms were coming to be. So, so we continue on, and here's the Permian period, uh, period which was during the uh, sorry, Paleozo Paleozoic area, era. And at the very end of that era, there was a terrible extinction. That means a lot of animals died off. And when they died off, that made room for the Triassic. Some of you know about the Triassic because that's a familiar dinosaur period. Well, sadly, at the end of the Triassic period, there was also, oh, sorry, my head's away. Right, right, there's one of our dinosaurs. At the end of the Triassic period, there was another great big extinction, and a lot of other animals died off. And so then, during the Jurassic period, um, animals, some of the dinosaurs, some of the reptiles, started to develop, develop wings. And that might have been uh, the beginning of birds, the, the start of birds coming into the picture. And so, as time went on through the Mesozoic period, some of those animals developed characteristics of mammals. They still laid their eggs, but their babies had fur, and they drank their mother's milk, and so that was a new change. And then here, we, we can see in the Cretaceous period, what does that look like? It looks like a kangaroo. So as the life form continued to develop, some of the animals were born and then they crawled into their mummy's little pouch and they were safe there. So all throughout history, animals have tried to survive on Earth and they have tried to adapt to their environment so that they do not become extinct. And that's what we're seeing in this timeline. And then, the um, reptiles eventually morphed into, some of them, into mammals, as we know them. And we know that mammals are born living, they drink their mother's milk, they have fur, they have a backbone. These are all things that you can check out on yourself. Do you have hair on your head? Yes. Do you have a backbone? Do you feel your backbone? Do you, did you come out living? Did, were you born living? Yes. And did you drink your mother's milk? Yes. Yes, so you're all mammals. So we go through the whole timeline of life. And what is most special about this timeline is that it shows us what important work was done all through those, those almost four billion years. The earth was living before we ever came along. And so here we are. Do you see this man right here? Yes. Yeah. He is standing next to a tiny red line. And I told you, that skinny, skinny little line shows us how long humans have been on earth compared to all this time that came before. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah. Do you think that we have a big responsibility to take care of the earth that has been created since we came along? Yes. Or before we came along? Yeah. I think so too. We have a lot of caring to do for our earth, don't we? And for all the life forms that came along. All right, well I hope that you will all go back to your classrooms and start to investigate some of these animals, some of these periods, some of these eras. Get to know all those animals that are up there. They're fascinating. Thank you.